afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, today, I'm, uh, my name is Paul Suriga, and I'm presenting a, a comparative study focusing on the impact of ocean acidification in the shell regulation mechanisms of two marine bivalves. First of all, to, to take a quick uh, look into bivalves, they are one of the seven classes of the phylum mollusca. Uh, they are invertebrates and mostly marine. They are economically important because they account for 14% of the, of the global aquaculture production in 2018, and they provide ecosystem services such as habitat structure, water purification, and, and food source for predators. However, uh, climate change is believed to have a, a negative impact on, on their sur survival because a decrease in seawater pH uh, can impact their shell uh, building, shell structure, and composition. Therefore, the shell formation can become a, a more costly process. However, uh, it's not known yet if this will impact the same way in, in all the all bibles because this depends on the on the shell structure. Here I present two different uh, bival species. One of them is the Mediterranean mussel, which is Mytilus gallo provincialis, and the other one is Casostrea gigas, the Pacific oyster. This Bivalve species have a different shell composition. Uh, Mytilus has a hard shell, whereas the oyster has a soft shell. And the, hardener of, and the hardness of this shell uh, depends especially on the arrangement of these crystals, of the mineral crystals that we can see in the image, in the shell uh, matrix. Uh, Mytilus, we can see that uh, the, the crystals are more compacted, uh, whereas in the oyster they are more dispersed. The overall arrangement of these crystals uh, determine the, the structure of, uh, of the shell. As we can see in the muscle, we have a prismatic structure, whereas in the oyster we, we see a foliated and layered structure. These two species are phylogenetically distant, then they diverged more or less at the same time as humans from Teleost. Because this shell building process has been thoroughly studied, there's available genomes and transcriptomes of these two species. And the number of protein coding genes, they dif uh, it differ differs with the muscle uh, almost as double as the oyster. So now let's take a quick look in the shell production. Because this shell production is uh, it shares some bases among all the bivalves. The shell is mainly composed by carbonate calcium uh, and a low proportion, a small proportion of uh, uh, an, a matrix, an a protein matrix. The shell is covered by a by an organic layer called periostracum, and in the inside is covered by the mantle, which is the tissue in charge of shell building. Between the mantle and the and the shell, we can see the extra pallial space, which is important for the biomineralization process. The mantle secretes the the shell. And this uh, secretion, this uh, uh, process, uh, depends especially on secreted matrix proteins, which are the, the ones that integrate the shell and provides the structure, ion pumps and channels, which are in charge of moving the, the ions, such as calcium and, and bicarbonate, and enzymes, which are, in which are in charge of the building process. One particular enzyme, important enzyme, is the carbonic anhydrase, which is in charge of hydrating the CO2 to, to convert it in bicarbonate. These proteins are believed to be part of a, a bigger set of genes that is shared among many bivalves, which is called the biomineralization toolbox. In addition, inside the shell, proteomic data shown, showed that there's some immune-related proteins which are believed to have a cross-building process. So the objective of, uh, of my project is to characterize and compare the impact of a decrease in seawater pH in the mantle of these two species. First of all, the experiment was, was, had been carried out before the start of my thesis, but it's important to, to know. Uh, the, the two species were separated in two groups each, uh, having a Seawater, a low seawater pH, which is 7.8, which is the expected pH for uh, the year 200, uh, 2100, and the normal seawater pH. In addition, uh, a shell uh, surface damage, shell damage was inflicted. So in the end, we had four different conditions. Control, C, ocean acidification, OA, uh, shell sanded, and shell sanded ocean acidification. Then the samples were taken 60 days uh, after the start of the experiment, which is a, a very important uh, factor to consider because most of the studies so far, they focused on the uh, short-term 
period. And in this case, we can consider 60 days is uh, already two months, which is a midterm. Then mental edge samples were taken. The mental edge is the most active part uh, in terms of shell building. And part of the samples were taken for functional analysis and part were uh, sent to Illumina uh, RNA-Seq. Then basically the, the main methods I, I used, <clears throat> first of all, we, we took a look uh, uh, at the shell growth at the shell area and we performed a visual inspection of the of the shell then we we studied the, the activity of one of carbonic anhydrase which is involved in biomineralization and we observed two activities of this same enzyme then we took a look on, on the gene expression uh, of this mantle of, of the mantle and for this we performed quality control we observed the differentially expressed genes among between the four conditions. So in the end, we, we obtained six uh, libraries of differentially expressed genes. However, I will focus mainly on the control and ocean acidification, but I will use the, the, re the rest of comparisons as a support. Then we identified the protein coding genes based on NCBI and PFAM databases. Then we perform a, a gene ontology enrichment, which is based on classifying between the shells, the according either shell, the, the genes, according to their molecular function, biological process, and cellular compartment. And finally, we classified the genes uh, according to their physiological functions, uh, taking into account biomineralization and immune related functions. What we observed after the, the experiment, uh, here we, we have the measure of uh, the shell in square millimeters, and we observed a substantial decrease on growth in this uh, in the individuals kept under ocean acidification condition. In the oyster, we couldn't observe any difference in the shell apart from the smaller size, but in the muscle, we could observe not only smaller size, but also periostracum corrosion and breakage, and also we observed an increase of basal thread marks. And we <coughs> measured the, the enzymatic activity of the carbonic anhydrase. First, we looked at the esterase activity, which is not specific for this enzyme, but still is indicative. And we could see that in the case of the muscle, ocean acidification uh, promotes the activity. So we could see an increase. In the case of the oyster, we could see a, a decrease in the activity of this enzyme. Then we hydrotase activity, which is specific of these enzymes. And for this, we performed a gemogram. This consists on, first of all, we, we uh, did a separation uh, by SDS page gel, which fraction, fractionates the, the proteins according to their size. And then we added a, a, a substrate that with a pH indicator, when there's activity, because this gel is native, uh, the of the proteins are, uh, are kept. So when, when we add the substrate, uh, the substrate, and uh, we could we can observe a change of color, which this color can be linked to the activity, the intensity of the color linked to the activity of the protein. First of all, for the muscle, we could observe a common band in uh, the four conditions at 40 kilodaltons, and an additional band at 45 kilodaltons for the shell sanded organisms. In the oyster, we could observe a common band at 42, and two additional bands only for control and ocean acidification at 21 and 90 kilodaltons. These different bands correspond to isoforms of the carbonic anhydrase because they have a lot of isoforms. Also, these some of these bands were or correspond to carbonic anhydrases that has uh, have already been described. And finally, the the two activities uh, we observe a match a link between the the control in the ester of the oyster in the esterase activity and the hydrotase activity a uh, uh, slight increase of activity. And then. We went for the mantle gene expression. First of all, we could annotate 70%. We could identify 70% of these proteins based on these two uh, databases. And then we check at the differential expressed genes, which are the genes that are statistically significantly differ differentially expressed between two conditions. So what we could see here, I present the, the six conditions. And what we could see is, especially in the control against ocean acidification, there, there is a big difference between meteors who had 518 differential expressions against the only 48 from the oyster. Visualize this in a, in a heat map. Uh, 
Here in each column corresponds to an individual. We have the three replicates of control and the th three replicates of ocean acidification, and each row corresponds to its. As we can see, we can easily observe clustering of the individuals according to the experimental group. And we can also see that there's a fewer number of genes. Then we took a look at the gene regulation of these differentially expressed genes. And always relative to the control, we could see that ocean acidification had an upregulation of uh, more genes than dam regulation in the metulus. But in the US, there we could observe exactly the opposite. So OA had a suppressing effect, let's say. And, and then what we could also see, comparing the with the stressors, uh, not on but also uh, shell sanding, we could see that the muscle response is based in changing the regulation of the already expressed genes, always proportionally because the muscle has a bigger a bigger number of uh, genes. And in the oyster, we could observe that there, there's like newly recruited genes to adapt to the new condition more than uh, regulating the ones that are already expressed. Then in the gene ontology enrichment, it's uh, based on a database that is uh, Basic uh, is uh, based on vertebrates, so we could only annotate the go term, the geontology term, uh, for 30% of our genes, which is quite low. However, we could see a, a large diversity of processes involved uh, in this uh, differential expressed genes, and we focused particularly on those that were more related to biomineralization, such as the extracellular region, which corresponds to the proteins that are secreted uh, to the extra pallial space to carry out some enzymatic activities. The ion binding um, uh, genes who are in, in charge of the movement of ions to create this environment in the extra pallial space. And also the immune uh, processes, because these are, uh, as I mentioned, these are suggested to be also involved in the biomineralization. We can see clearly a higher because in this graph I show the number of differential expressions, we can see a much higher response of the muscle that's uh, uh, easily seen. But also what we see in the oyster is that in presence of the two stressors, the response increases much more than only with the ocean acidification. And in the immune processes in the oyster, we see almost no response. You have two minutes. Thank you very much. <laughs> then, yeah, just to finish, this is my uh, almost last slide. The differential, we took a look at the differential regulation of these biomineralization and immune related genes. <clears throat> we classified the genes according to, this, uh, to these two functions. And what we saw is that in the comparison between control and ocean acidification in the metulus, we see that both biomineralization and immune related genes, the, the response increases the enhances the, the expression of these genes. However, in the oyster, we observe uh, the opposite pattern. Nevertheless, it's important to take into account that the number of differential expressed genes of the oyster is quite low, so this, the conclusion from here should be taken carefully. Finally, when we compare the shell sanded organism against the shell sanded and ocean acidification, we can observe a uh, quite similar response in the two species. So even though the, <coughs> the project is still ongoing, we can already withdraw some conclusions. First of all, the growth uh, of the two species is affected by ocean acidification. Second of all, the activity of the enzymes is also, biomineralization enzymes is also affected. Third, uh, that the muscle, even though the gene expression is modified in two species, the muscle is much more responsive than the oyster, after 60 days, at least. And finally, the two species respond differently in terms of biomineralization and immune-related genes. So our study suggests that the impact of ocean acidification on bivalves mantle response will be species-specific. And I would like to thank especially Joao Cardoso, Professor Deborah Power, and Michelle Ben for their support and help and patience.